you are coming here to look for something. You are coming here to find the teaching of Tanachan Mahabhava. You are looking or coming here to find the way to Nibbana. Some people have more intention of going to Nibbana. Some people just want to get out of Dukkha, what would be the same thing. And you all have the merit, the vasana, to be here. Don't forget to be born at the times of the Lord Buddha, one needs a lot of merit. To be able to be born and meet with the Lord Buddha. If one doesn't have the vasana, or if one doesn't have the merit, acquired the merit, then one would not be able to be born at the time where the Lord Buddha rose and found enlightenment. <coughs> and it's the same thing with great teachers here in Thailand. If we don't have the store of merit, there is no way that we will ever come here. Even if we know of this place, it would be just impossible for us to come here and listen to the teaching. But because we are here, that means we have acquired a bit of the merit to be able to stay here and listen in. And even, maybe even more to be able to practice in the way the Tanachan Mahabhava so, ta- so kindly teaches us and in the way that the teacher of Tanachan Mahabhava, Tanachan Man, taught us. So, use this merit very well. As I said, I was listening to a few talks that were on the websites of the different Western monks. I thought, oh, that is nice. They're talking about compassion, they're talking about awareness, they're talking about metta. And then after I listened in for a while, I listened to a talk of Tanachan, Mahaboa, and it was very From the beginning, even if it was a talk to the general public, from the very beginning, he was drumming the Dhamma. He wouldn't talk about the world, he was talking Dhamma. The drums in the beginning were slowly, and then he hit the percussion, Sati, mindfulness. Mindfulness, the importance of mindfulness. Then he was talking about Kama, what we are doing right now, that we should be aware of what we are doing and the results that we will have. Then he was talking about Raga Tanha. Raga Tanha, the creed for sensual desires, the creed for sense pleasures. And then he was talking about hell and heaven. And how easy it is to get in hell and how long we will be there, the more grievous our deed is. It can be up to 160,000 years that we will be in hell. We just have to kill our mother or our father to go in the deepest state of hell. And we will stay there for 160,000 years. We have to kill an Arahant or we have to draw blood from the Lord Buddha or just split the Sangha. That's all what we need to do to go into hell for such a long time. He usually talks about 
the greed and hate and raka tanha. Raka tanha, the greed for the unsatisfying sense of pleasure that we always are looking for. And he talks about the sila, morality and virtue. And his talks to the public to the general public always are filled with these topics. You might t- take another topic if it's if it's convenient or if it's necessary, he might elaborate on another topic, but when he talks to the public it's always the same thing. He talks about the danger of the Kilesas, he talks about the danger of Avicca or the power of Avicca and how easily we are deluded. He doesn't, he doesn't talk very nicely or very compassionate about the Kilesas. But he makes the point quite clear that these are the dangers. What are the kilesas? The kilesas are the fangs of avicca. Avicca is delusion. Avicca is not knowing. Avicca is not wanting to know. Avicca is the magician. It's the creator of this whole universe. Avicca Pataya Sankara. Avicca is a condition. It's a condition for all phenomena to arise. And we live in the world or in the universe of these phenomena. So Avicca is the creator of this universe. Avicca is the creator of our self. Or what we call self. <coughs> So remember this one. Avicca Pataya Sankara. Avicca is the condition for all these phenomena to arise. And we ourselves are phenomena. He talks about samadhi, the importance of samadhi, the importance of keeping our mind fixed to the object of the word Buddha or to the breath. To get into the still space of Samadhi, to get into a safe haven, to get and rest ourselves. We rest our body daily, but when do we rest our mind? When we come here and we have never meditated or never practiced before, we have never ever rested our mind. How, in what kind of turmoil must our heart be if we have never rested? Just think about yourself. If you continue working just for five days without taking a rest, without taking food for nourishment, how depleted will you be? But our chitta or our heart just goes on. So, the turmoil we are in is the turmoil because we have not put our mind to rest. So when we have not put our mind to rest, we do not perceive things as they really are. We have, our mind is scattered because we have never tried to rein it in. So let's rein it in. By doing samadhi. By doing the practice of samadhi. By getting the mind still and firm. So firm that we go beyond the world of self. When we, when we first enter the world beyond our thoughts, it's the first safe haven we have come in. 
It's called Upachara Samadhi, Access Samadhi. When we come out, it's all back to the same. We can do that as often as we wish, but it will not change when coming back we are still in the same kind of problem. So samadhi is not the cure for our problems. When we go into the deep state of samadhi, that is called apana samadhi, then not only our thoughts disappear, our body disappears, and the whole world around us disappears. And there is nothing left than knowingness. Knowingness, one-pointedness are the same thing. As long as we are in this world of duality, there is I and you. There is the opposites. There is heaven and hell. There is dukkha and sukha. The moment the mind enters one-pointedness or the heart enters one-pointedness, all the opposites disappear. And because of all of the opposites disappear, that's why all phenomena of this duality have to disappear as well. So our body has to disappear and the world has to disappear. And all what is left is knowingness, all what is left is peacefulness and happiness. But the moment we come out, everything is the same. The troubles have not changed, our worries have not changed, our fear has not changed, and our thoughts and imagination has not changed. But we know that we have been to a place where we feel at home, to a place where there is safety, where, where there is no dukkha, where there is happiness, peacefulness and complete stillness. Tanata Mahaboa says about this state of samadhi, it's a nibbana of the little man. Everybody, that means everybody who puts his interest into, can acquire it. He can see the preview of Nibbana. He can see what it would be like if you make the effort to get rid of Avicca, to get rid of Lopa, Dosa and Avicca, that means greed, hatred and delusion. Once we get rid of it, then we are back, or then we are back at home back at our true home in the home of Nibbana. If we still are alive, if we still have the khandas, then the khandas are the khandas pure. That means we have a, our body is pure, our Vedana feeling is pure, our memory is pure, our Sankhara is pure, and our Vinyana They are only impure because of the power of the kilesas. And the kilesas, I use this term very often, are the fangs of Avicca, are the arms of Avicca, are the soldiers of Avicca. That Avicca sends out to bother us, sends out to burn us, sends out to keep us in their reign. As long as we stay in their reign, they won't give us much trouble. It's the same way if we are a prisoner and we do not break, try to break out, out of our prison, nobody will give us trouble. The moment we try to step out of our prison, they come and keep trying to keep us back. So, the way of practice is fighting these cases. However you say, 
however nice you say, however much compassion you have, if you have compassion with the soldiers that keep you in prison, you will never step out of prison. You cannot have compassion with the Kilesas, with the force that keeps you in prison. Otherwise, there is no way out. So when Tanaja Mahabhava talks about the fight against the Kilesas, he compares, compares it to getting in a box ring or boxer ring. The first time you're in this bo boxing ring and you fight against the champion and the champion is nothing else than a Vicha, it will knock you out. So, once you regain your consciousness, what are you doing? You go back. You knock, okay, you knock KO and you fall back. You regain your consciousness and go back. And that is where all our effort goes. Just going back into the boxing ring and trying to understand the hits or the blows of Avita. Once we have been there for a while and be able to observe, then we might be able to duck so that we don't get this block. And after a while, we will be able to see where Avicca has its open spaces, so that we actually can give it a blow. The first blow against Avicca is a victory. It's a great victory, and we feel very happy that we could deal out a blow. But shortly after, we will get another hit. And that will go on and go on. Until we finally are able, through our investigation, through our mindfulness, if we are not mindful and observing how is Avicca dealing the blows, we will never understand how to duck, and we will never understand or see the weaknesses of Avicca. So, we have to need, we have to develop mindfulness to catch this champion, to observe this champion and to see his techniques, to see his tactics. And once we see them and once we understand them and then once we see a chance to hit them, then we can. And this fight goes on and goes on and then goes on until we give him the last hit that sets him up. Until Avicca is destroyed. So from the day we start on the path till the day we give the final blow to Avicca, we are in the boxing ring. And of course in the beginning it, it is not not very comfortable to receive all these blows. But once Avicca is destroyed, then we will gain our freedom. Because there is nobody in this whole universe that can trouble us anymore. <coughs> The source of all our troubles, the source of all our dukkha, avicca has been eliminated. So if you see that as short path, then if you want to go the path, if you want to go the path to the first blow that we give avicca or to the last blow where he, where he is destroyed, then we know Every day, every, mi every hour, every minute, we have to step, the moment our consciousness is coming back, we have to step back into this box. We just cannot persuade our Vicha to go away. Whatever we give it, it takes it, and it still 
it says. We cannot persuade Avicii to go away. It has had a reign for such a long time, for such endless or countless times over us. It will not give up its rule. It will not give up its reign peacefully. We have to fight our way for freedom. Freedom, if we understand it, we have to understand it correctly. There is no freedom in the body. There is no freedom in feelings. There is no feeling and no freedom in memory and association. And the same thing for thinking and consciousness. Because all of these five khandhas that I just mentioned are part of this universe. And if they are part of this universe, they follow the laws of Avicca. So there we cannot find freedom. The freedom of the body, there is no freedom. What we can find, what we can gain if we destroy Avicca is the freedom of the chitta or is the freedom of the mind. Not to be troubled anymore by these five countries, not to be troubled anymore by fear, by hate, by greed, by doubt, or by worries. That is the freedom that we can gain. It's not the freedom of the body. It's not the freedom of doing what we want to do. This is not, the, that's no freedom. In the end, wanting will cease. The freedom is the freedom from not wanting. Wanting this or wanting that. Not wanting this or not wanting that. This is the freedom we reach. Not no wanting. And once the wanting has been quelled, there is peace. There is stillness and there is paramang sukkhan, the ultimate happiness. And the ultimate happiness, no matter if you are still in this car or in this body, doesn't affect the body and doesn't affect the other countries. So understand that if you're looking for the freedom of the body or the f from the freedom of the Vedana or Dukkha Vedana, this you cannot gain. You can only gain if you gain the freedom of in Ibana and then die. Then there is no body, there are no five countries. That's the end. That is called Parinibbana. The Nibbana after death. That's, we are free of the five countries. As long as we live in this world, even when we have made the victory and destroyed Avicca, we still have this body. And as you know, the body can get sick, and the body can have pain, and we have painful feelings, and we have pleasant feelings, but they, in the state of the Iran, they don't trouble the mind. He sees for what they are. And that is something that we don't want to see. We run away from our pleasant feelings, we run away from our unpleasant feelings. We run away from the truth. Constantly running away. Never dare to look. So when I talked about the boxing fight against Avicca, now we dare to look. How did he hit us? How did he fool us? When we talk about the magician, Avicca you can call it a magician, how did it fool us? How did it make us stay on our seat once we were determined to go beyond the stage and understand the tricks, how he fools us. Once we stand up, he just shows us a new trick and we sit down again because we have never seen this kind of trick. So no matter how you describe a Vicha, if you 
describe it as a uh, champion of the boxer, or if you try describe it as magician, it doesn't matter. It's one and the same principle. So however you like it, but I hope you gathered now that it is not an easy way out. But it is compared to the work in the world to the toughest work in the world. It's tougher, however, it is each step or each stone we put away, it's more satisfying than anything that we can achieve in this world. Whatever we can achieve in this world, the moment we die is gone. Just gone. The wealth we have achieved the status we have achieved, it's all gone. Just disappears the moment we die. In the next life, we have to do the work to achieve it again. So if you come from Europe, then you might remember the work of Sisyphus. Sisyphus had to roll up the gods damned him to roll up a stone to the mountain. Once he rolled it up, the stone fell back again. So I had to go down and roll it up. And that's why it's called work of Sisyphus. It's never ending work. And you never ever gain something. You just roll it up and then it falls down, you roll it up and it falls down, you roll it up and it falls down. So when you know these Greek stories, then there are quite some interesting stories. The other story is the story of Prometheus. Or Prometheus. Prometheus. Who was chained to the mountain and I think it was a vulture who ate up his liver. Every day. During the night, the liver was how do you say? Uh, what do you say? The liver was growing back again. So, the next day, he had to face the dukkha while he was still alive that the, that the birds or that the vultures were eating its liver. And you imagine the dukkha. You imagine the suffering that he went through. And there was no end to the suffering. Because in the night, the liver grew back to its normal form again. And the next day, the vultures came again. Think about these stories. About 2,000 years ago, they were brought to us. The never-ending Dukkha. And the never ever achieving something of Sisyphus. The fruitless work. Rolling up a stone. Up the mountain. The mountain, the top of the mountain didn't have a place, you know, where one can place the stone, so it rolled back again. Nothing what we do in this world, nothing what we do in this world will have we only roll up the stone. The higher we roll it, the, the better we think we are. But the moment we die, it gets dark. Okay. And then the next life, we roll it up again. And the next life, again. Okay. And when are you going to stop? When are we going to stop? With this kind of fruitless work. When are we going to stop with a dukkha of Prometheus. Always tearing out our liver that grows back to us. It's the same as to be born, to get old, to get sick and die. To be born, get old, sick and die. To be born, get old, sick and die. 
where's the end? When is the end? When do we have the determination to get out of the cycle of rebirth? When? And then the Kilesas come and say, oh, just one more life. This was not so perfect. Maybe the next one is more perfect. The next one is better. If you do some merit, the next life will be better. The next life we will do the same thing. We roll up the stone to the top of the mountain. And in the next life, when we die, the stone will go to the bottom. And in the same time, within that life, the vultures are eating our internal organs. Rip them out while we are still alive. How long? How long are we going on? Why don't we step out? Because the master of persuasion is nicely behind our ears and will tell us next life it will be better. Next life we will be in heaven. Next life we will achieve this. Or if it's not next life, if this life. He always tells us lies and we always believe. We always believe. He tells us if you sit for half an hour and the pain is too big, oh, this is not for you. This is nothing. You shouldn't be able, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do this. It's too painful. Just let's go out, you know, and have some fun. And of course we believe it, you know. We never investigated if that is really fun, what Avicca is promising. Is it really fun? Have you ever investigated of what you're doing? What kind of result will it have on your heart? Does it set your heart in trouble? Does it set your heart on fire? What is the result of our action? Why don't we prove this avicca wrong? Why not investigate? What is he promising? And does he keep his promise? He doesn't care about his promise. He just promised and promised and promised. Next, this next moment it will get better. Next moment it will get better. Next life it will get better. Or in ten lives it will get better. The further away it is and the more we believe it. And the more we can't prove it wrong. Well, he had so, so long, so long a power over us. And he has so much become us that we just cannot find the way out. So the way out is the way of keeping our seal, of keeping our morality, of keeping our virtue, about keeping the five precepts. The next thing on the path of out is to train our mind to stay on one to end up in one point in to see the fruits of our work, to see a preview of the things that we could get. Because if we don't see it, it's very difficult to face up with all the difficulties that come along. So it's nice to have something where we can rest our mind. It's nice where we have a place where we can feel safe that importance of Samadhi. We should not forget. Samadhi trains mindfulness and mindfulness helps Samadhi. Mindfulness helps the concentration. And the last thing is investigation. And that what I was talking about. Getting on the tricks of Avicca. Investigating what is he promising and if does he 
keep his promises. Have you ever checked it? Most of us haven't. They just believe it. When we get this degree, then we get that job, then we get that money, then that we get that partner, and then we get children, and then we will be happy to the rest of our lives, like they tell us all in these stories. Do we ever get that? No. Every moment we experience Dukkha. Dissatisfaction, restlessness, and sometimes pain. Pain, physical pain or mental pain. Some moments during our day we might experience something pleasant. And this pleasantness, that is what Avicca uses to keep us on the track. So he gives us sugar and heat keeps us in prison. Because of all this sugar, we are willing to stay in the prison. Tanaja Mahaboa compares the kilesa with sugar-coated poison. The taste, when once we put the pill, once we put, put everything that Avicca tells us to do into practice, The first taste is very sweet and the second taste kills us. It's poison that slowly kills us. Slowly makes us dead. Like a dead vegetable, in the end we will not be able to have any mindfulness left to know what is going on. So how long are we going to do the work of the Sisyphus? How long are we going how long are we going to tolerate the Dukkha of Prometheus? When are we going to step out of this cycle? When? And if we step out, it's a tough road. It's a stony path. But there is no comparison in the world. Every step we take along this path, even if we cannot reach it, the end of the path in this life, is a work that is more satisfactory than any other kind of work in the world. Any kind of other achievement in the world. Just this one step, just another step, and another step. Just get this stone out of my way, that stone out of my way. We never know when it's the last stone. So there we have to put up our determination and our effort just to pick up that stone and put it aside. That stone put it aside, and that stone, and put it aside. The moment it is the last stone, then we know. All the stones have been removed. Our Vicha has been destroyed, and this is our freedom. So our determination, patience, effort, are some of the keys of our practice. We have to train all the things. Like sila, that's virtue. We have to train samadhi. We have to train that the mind can keep up this, this object that he chose to be with. An investigation, investigation of anicca, anatta, dukkha, impermanence, not self, and restlessness or discomfort, investigation of the five khandas, of rupa, vedana, sanya, sankara, and vinyana. More we do not have to investigate. We 
can investigate also the four elements, the fire element, the water element, the earth element, and the air element. When you look at all the phenomena in this universe, all, each one of them consists of the four elements. So these are the topics of our investigation. Anicca, Anatta, Dukkha, the five khandas, Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and the four elements. But in, before we actually can do the work, like every kind of work in the world, we have to train the body or train the mind for worldly work, so we have to train the mind in the terms of the spiritual world. Keep it on one object. If our mind is jumping around all the time, we cannot set it for the one work we want to do. Because it jumps off this work and then finds another work and then finds another work and the rest is just the same. We haven't even started. If we have to concentrate on this one work that we want to do. If we want to investigate the body, then let's investigate the body. What is the body like? Whatever makes contact to this body, we throw either throw away or have to wash. The cloth, we have to wash. The bed sheets, we have to wash. The sleeping bags, we have to wash. Our heads we have to wash. Where is all this dirt coming from? It's coming from the inside of this body. But when we look at the body, we never look at it, the source of all this dirt and all this loathsomeness. We see only the skin, the beauty of the skin and the beauty of the form. If it's the other sex, then it has a special impact. That's what we feel. What is the skin? The skin is as thin as a tissue paper. And that now yeah, what's it? What's the word? That 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 no, 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 no. That hides. Okay. This tissue paper. Thin, the skin as thin as the tissue paper hides the pus, the blood, the sinews, the bones, the flesh from our side. If we take away this tissue paper, there is no interest in this body at all. Just look in the mirror and take off your skin and you don't look a second time. You just don't want to see. But as long as we have this thin tissue paper around it that gives us this nice look and these beautiful hairs that are falling up down our head or that partly cover our body or our chin then we feel satisfied. Tear it off and we have no interest. No interest whatsoever. All our interest for the body is ceased for that moment. We take away that thin layer of skin. All our sensual pleasures just imagine you know, having no skin and touching somebody else who has no skin. Where is the pleasure? It's gone. Just loathsomeness, disgust that comes up. See how this fine layer of skin disguises the real and that's what we do when we do investigation of the body. 
than we do. So these are the sub subjects that Tanachan mostly talks about when he gives a talk to the general public or when he gives a talk to his disciples or when he gives a talk to his mother. There's hardly anything else. He talks about this in detail or that in detail. Sometimes this, sometimes he points out the, the path from the beginning through stream entry up to Arahatamaka. He never talks about the niceness of the Kilesas and how we should be compassionate, be compassionate with all the, the, the soldiers that keep us in the prison. He always is furious against it. And he says, we have to stand up and fight. However you call it, maybe you don't like the, the, the language of the warriors, but that is the language that he and his venerable teacher is used. The language of the soldier and even the Lord Buddha said, it is easier to fight against an army of soldiers than it is to fight oneself. So the Lord Buddha talks about the fight. Tanachan Man talks about the fight. And Tanachan Mahaboa talks about So if I tell you something, how much matter and compassion you should have with this, then it wouldn't be able to get you to the freedom from suffering, to the freedom from doing. It's a fight. And from my own personal experience, it's a fight every minute. You always have to fight your inner wanting, wanting this or wanting that, not wanting this or not wanting that. Sorry, but if the Lord Buddha talks about this in this way, and if Tanacha Man talks about it in this way, and Tanacha Mahabua, my venerated teacher, talks about this in this way, how dare would I talk in another way? Maybe, I don't know, maybe there are the paths. The Lord Buddha said his path is the shortest path and there are other paths to Nibbana. So, if we want to get out of this mess, why not taking the shortcut? Standing up, getting out of prison. getting to the freedom. The freedom of the mind, the freedom of the chitta that is not troubled anymore. Just think about the troubles you face 24 hours a day. In the night you dream, sometimes nice, sometimes awfully dream. They trouble you the moment you wake up. During the day, you think awful things or sometimes nice things. You have worries, you have doubts, you have fears. Are this the kind of freedom we are talking about? No. The freedom is the freedom from dukkha. The freedom is the freedom from doubt, fear, greed and hate. From want. That's what we're talking about. And don't think you can persuade a reacher to give up its reign. Don't even think about it. You have to go beyond the stage and see through the tricks of a reacher, of this master magician. Or see through the tricks of this master champion box. 
sorry, but there is no other way. Other way that I can see. It's the way that I have gone by myself. And it's the way that I know leads to the end of the world. And with this, I'll stop.